This is an introduction to exercise 9.3 on differentiating exponential functions, page 394 of your textbook. With differentiating the exponential functions, in this case, we're specifically focusing on the Euler's value, so the e to the power of x. Of course, please note a couple of things. First thing is if we're given a function of e to the power of x, our f dash of x, or a derivative of that the Euler's number to the power of x, of course, is just going to be e to the power of x. Right? However, in this case, where if you have f of x equals e to the power of k times x, we're going to be applying our chain rule in the sense that f dash of x now equals to k times e to the power of kx. Do note that the original e to the power of kx remains the same, of course. If you're curious, of course, Euler's number comes from this notion right here, where e equals to the limit as n approaches to infinity of 1 plus 1 over n or to the power of n. Though, please note that that is not an accessible aspect of our assessments. Okay, let's look at some examples. Find the derivative of each of the following with respect to x. Of course, applying our previous formula, we know that e to the power of 3 times x is, of course, going to be derived to give us 3, because that's the what we get from deriving the power right there. So that's 3 times e to the power of 3x. That's it. Move on to the second component. We get e to the power of 2x plus 1. Of course, the same general principle applies. We derive the top of the power, and that becomes 2. And we go 2 times e to the power of 2x plus 1, or we can just write 2e to the power of 2x plus 1. One more thing to note while you're working through this, if you're double-checking on your calculator, you might see something like this. And I've just put in the original first the first one we had. However, you'll note that if you have e to the power of 3x, right, and you derive it, you should have something like this. However, please also note that if you end up with something like this, where you have 3 times e to the power of 3x times ln of e, of course, ln of e is the same as saying log base e of e, which should give you 1, because it's saying e to the power of what gives you 1. But the reason you're getting this is because you're not using Euler's value. A lot of students make the mistake of putting in the letter e from the variable calculator that is just taking e as a letter or a pronumeral. You should be using the Euler's number, which is a bolded e, or bolded and italic, italicized, italicized e in your calculator keyboard. Next example, of course, we're applying our differentiation rules where we can just derive the first one and then derive the second one here. But the first thing I'm going to do is rewrite this one as e to the power of negative 2x plus e to the power of 3x. Once we've done that, we can derive that. Once we derive that, we can say that we have negative, and note that I'm not writing an equal sign here because I'm, it's not equal, I'm writing the derivative, okay? So that's going to be negative 2 times e to the power of negative 2x plus e to, so apologies, 3 e to the power of 3x. And once we've done that, I can actually then put an equal sign here and factorize that e to the power of negative 2x and end up with negative 2 plus 3 to the power of 5x. An optional simplification, entirely optional. Up next, finding the gradient of the tangent of the curve. We have y equals to e to the power of 2x plus 4 at the point 1 comma e squared plus 4. This question is a lot easier than it looks. So the first thing you have to do is, of course, derive this. So we end up with dy dx because it's given to us as y. We derive that. That gives us 2 times e to the power of 2x at x equals to 1 because that's the x value of my coordinate. I end up with dy dx equals to 2 times e to the power of 2, or I can just rewrite that as 2e to the power of 2. Again, you can always double check that in your calculator by uh, using the calculation line tan line function to find the gradient of the tangent. Last example. This is a perfect example of our exponential, our practicing using, uh, finding the derivative of an exponential decay. Under the exponential decay, the amount of radon 222 in milligrams that is present after t days is given by the function f of t equals to a times e to the power of r times t, where a and r are constants. Constants, of course, we're saying that those do not change over time. Those are just individual values. If an initial amount of 100 milligrams decays to 84.11 milligrams after one day, show that the value of r is approximately negative 0.173. In this scenario, it's really good that we, uh, or I should say it's best that we identify our variables or our values. I've got 100 milligrams, 84.11 milligrams, and I'm trying to find this value here. 
to show that question, so you should not be using zero, negative 0 0.173 as your explanation. Of course, I know that because the a, this value right here that's been multiplied is my original value, so I'm going to say that a equals to 100. I also know that f of t, which is the amount of we have left at a certain time, is 84.11. That's specified for us. And actually also know that t equals to 1, given that it's after one day. And also t is given days, which then means that when I put in the calculator and I try to solve for 84.11 equals to 100 times by e to the power of r, Solving that in your calculator, r equals 2, and you can rearrange this all you'd like. You can show the assessors, but of course this will be a calculated question. r is approximately 0 or negative 0.173044472. Therefore, r is approximately negative 0.173. From this point on, it's already assuming that you're going to use negative 0, 0.173. If you use your negative 0 0.173044472, that's fine. You wouldn't get marks lost in an assessment, like SAC. However, if the question in a VCAR exam specifies assume this value, you must assume that value. Part B asks us to how much, correct to three decimal places. Uh, will 100 milligrams of radon-222 decay to in three days? Of course, we're applying the same principle where we have f of t, except in this case, t is going to be represented by 3. So f of 3 equals to 100 times by e to the power of negative 0 0.173. Again, we're assuming that value. Multiply that by 3, and we end up with approximately, and I'm using the approximately here, 59.512. 59.512. If you are using the correct as in the um, negative 0 0.173, you will end up with this. However, if you're using the extended value, then you end up with 59.504. Last question says that at what rate is radon-222 decaying after one week? Of course, we're saying that what rate, which means we're applying that it needs to be using the differentiated equation. So that's F dash of T, which is equivalent of 100 times by negative 0 0.173. So I'm just deriving the, t the uh, power and bring it down to the front, e to the power of negative 0 0.173 times by t, which then ends up being negative, one, negative 17, sorry, 0.3 times e to the power of negative 0 0.173t. Apologies for the awful handwriting. Once you've done that, we can rewrite the f dash of 7, which gives us an answer of negative 5.154. Which means, therefore, after one week, radon-222 is decaying at a rate of 5.154 milligrams per day. Of course, please know that because the question doesn't specify a unit, you must provide it as milligrams per day. Great.